G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel again for my weekly tips video. It has been a pretty eventful week, actually. Been keeping up with AFL on YouTube. Had Druzy over on the weekend, joining the live stream. My boys got the job done against the Pies. Went to the footy the next day with Druzy as well, which you can check out on his vlog. And then on the weekend, or even actually it was yesterday, we launched our second podcast with myself and Dylan, my new roommate. Uh, cool world. I'll leave the link in the description. We've had the first episode up and I just want to say thank you to all the support so far. I did allude to the podcast sometime last week that it was about to launch, but we finally actually have some content up. So go check us out. Go follow us on Insta. I'll be trying my best to do that and true footy at the same time for the rest of the footy season. But on top of that, as I alluded to in the live stream, if you caught it, uh, we've got some more exciting news at the moment at True Footy. We've got a trial sponsorship with a company called Manscaped.com. Now, if you haven't heard of Manscaped.com, they have just launched in Australia and they are positioning themselves as the premium ball hair shaver on the market. So if you're a young man like myself or Bushby, <laughs> So if you're a young man like myself or Bushby from the podcast, this could be right up your alley, so to speak. <laughs> Basically, these guys are producing premium. <laughs> Basically, these guys are offering precision engineered tools, your family jewels. But seriously, guys, if you are interested in this sort of thing, like myself, <laughs> I can't say. So if you fancy yourself as a bit of a manscaper, like many people, in our generation, you should definitely check these guys out. And in addition to that, you'd be really helping out the podcast. So basically, the deal is that I can get you guys a 20% discount and free shipping if you order their products through me using the code TRUEFOOTY. I'll leave the links to that in the description. You basically go to manscaped.com and with my code, you can get uh, some pretty good value products. If you wanna know more about the product, we will be talking more about it in the next podcast that I'll be doing with Busher sometime in the next week or so. In fact, we've probably got a couple lined up. But in this video, I just wanna let you guys know that that opportunity is available if you're a brand you're already aware of and considering buying from. Uh, I'll leave all the details for that in the description of this video. Anyway, guys, before we get into the tipping, and I know I'm rambling again, let's talk about the AFL Fantasy League. We do have a new league leader here at True Footy. It's Benny C's Benzo Party, aka Rory Davey, who now leads the league with an average of 1628 points a week, one point ahead of Thug Life, and another point ahead of third place Brody Holt. So it is getting tight at the top, and I'm sitting in 111th and getting further and further away from an upset victory. As for the actual footy tips, I am pleased to say my boy Log Dog, the raging St. Kilda fan in my comment section every week, had a really, really good round of eight tips with a margin of just two off. I'm guessing he tipped his boy St. Kilda, which tipped him over the line there, uh, because I certainly didn't tip them. Overall, the leader is Julian once again. He got seven right on the weekend, and his total score is 52. He's the outright leader with a margin of 222. So well done, Julian, and well done to those other boys as well. Not that anyone cares, because I certainly don't. My dad's in third, but I'm sure he wanted me to tell you that as well. But anyway, guys, enough about fantasy, enough about footy tipping rankings, enough about shaving your balls. Let's get into this round of footy tipping. So the first game of the week is at Metricon. By the looks, you've got the Bulldogs and Richmond. And this, in theory, could be a pretty good game. Last week, the Bulldogs were the center of kind of a, well, really exciting Thursday night game, even though it was low scoring. It's 46 to 51. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the margin never got past about two to five points at each change. And that really shows you how tight that contest was. I think that was the most 50-50 split game in terms of tipping last round. And uh, yeah, the game really reflected that. The Bulldogs getting a really crucial away win against the Gold Coast Sun, Gold Coast Sun side this year that are Certainly not easy beats. In fact, they're going to push close to finals. Uh, the Bulldogs are on a little bit of a purple patch at the moment. McRae was at his best with 29 disposals. And uh, that was a huge win for a side that are now 5-3 and three at 101%. And they're starting to create a little bit of a divide between that top 6-8 to eight sides and the sides below them. The Tigers, on the other hand, are again just so hard to read. you you got to rate them highly because of obviously the rating premiers and uh, how poorly they started last year. But we are almost halfway through the season, and they are currently in ninth spot. Look, I'm not writing them off. I still think they're going to go really deep in finals. Um, 
what kind of side we're going to get this week, I'm not too sure. They're not particularly strong on the road. And I know it's a neutral game at Carrara, or Metricon, sorry, it says Carrara on my screen here. Uh, be, even though it's a neutral game, they're not super good away from home interstate. I don't know how much we could really read into that, because if it's a night game, which I believe could be a bit greasy, I think that actually plays into Richmond's hands. Oh, I'm really tempted to go with the Bulldogs here, but I think I'm going to just have to tip Richmond, just because surely before long they're going to start winning, and the Bulldogs are just so up and down. Yeah, screw it. I'll go the Tigers by 16, 17 points. Carlton and Hawthorne. This is a weird game because it's like 3.30 Perth time uh, on a Friday afternoon. So it's bizarre. I certainly won't be able to watch the game. The more I do see of the Blues, the more I'm convinced they really have taken significant strides this year. They're a good side. Nearly got the job done against Port at the Gabba, which I found impressive even though they lost. And yes, okay, so they only beat North by seven points last week. The North are nowhere near as bad as some of the conjecture going around at the moment. Obviously, they've been playing horrible football and got smashed by the Tigers. Uh, but to take it up to Carlton in the way they did, that didn't surprise me at all. So Carlton don't lose anything from that contest as far as I'm concerned. And they're 4-4 four and four with a positive percentage of 103%. This is a very, very winnable game, especially when you consider... The fact that Hawthorne are playing really horrible football. So Hawthorne's last four, obviously they lost by a goal to Sydney last week, which is disappointing. Sydney were bottom four at the time, and now Hawthorne have actually dropped into the bottom four below them. Before that, they lost to the Dees by seven goals, Collingwood by five goals, and the Giants by six goals. Now Collingwood and GWS have played pretty average football since then, in particular Collingwood against West Coast. The Dees have been really unpredictable this year as well. I really don't know what to make of the Hawks season in the last month because, you know, guys like O'Meara are playing well. You got Shields and Sicily up there, prominent as well. But the, the impact, I guess, from a Tom Mitchell certainly isn't what it was, which is understandable given where he's coming back from. Warple won the best and fairest last year. I think Wingard's had a positive impact, but I wonder if there's just a few too many passengers at the Hawks right now. If I'm not mistaken, the Hawks are the only side that hasn't lost in Perth. I'm not sure. Either way, I just have this burning memory of the Hawks slaughtering us there last year. I do think Hawthorne are going to come back to form eventually, but it's so hard to pick when that week will be. I do think on paper they're better than Carlton, but on form, I'm going to have to go with the Blues to win by 20 points, and this would almost not bury the Hawthorne, but it would make top eight look very, very hard and hard to achieve. Melbourne take on Port Adelaide next at the Gabba. This is an interesting battle because, yeah, Melbourne are another... Weird team that are playing some up and down football. So a couple of weeks ago, they beat the Hawks by seven goals and then they took it right up to Brisbane in Queensland. It's hard to really gather how much of a home ground advantage Brisbane had. Probably not, just because they didn't travel. I guess Melbourne didn't really travel either. I guess we'll chalk that up as a genuine neutral game, but Brisbane are top two side and Melbourne took it up to them a lot better than some other sides have this season, including my boys. So definitely some positive progress for the D's and they really really just need a couple of wins to get that confidence back up. I think there's no doubting their ability when they've got that confidence back. Obviously 2019 sapped it when they finished bottom two but Clayton Oliver was huge. He had 125 fantasy points on the weekend and Petrarca again I don't I don't agree that he's the best player in the comp like was it Shane Crawford said it but he has certainly been one of their best players this year and he's starting to become that dynamic player we thought he would. Port Adelaide, on the other hand, had an absolute mare. They hosted St. Kilda. They were top of the ladder, 6-1. and one, And St. Kilda were pretty unconvinced in the last couple of weeks. They had that horrible loss to Fremantle. And then they did get the job done against Adelaide, but it is Adelaide. I must admit, I didn't watch the game, but you look at it at a surface level. Port Adelaide did have more scoring shots than the Saints, who have scored... 12 goals won. I think there's some stat where they're historically one of the most accurate sides ever in the first half of a season. I'm looking at the stats of this game. The Saints did have more inside 50s and slightly better efficiency. So, look, fair to say they probably did outplay the power. I'm prepared to let the power off as having an off day. But sometimes off days turn into off two or three weeks, if that is good English. It's not. I don't know here. I Look, I rate Port Adelaide think they're a good chance for top four or six at the moment, the way they've started the season, but I do think they're vulnerable here. They're coming up against the side, Melbourne, who will be looking their lips, who are really keen to make a statement and are probably at 13th, certainly actually not, they're, they're better than their ladder p position suggests, I reckon. I'm going to tip a little roughy here and say the D's get revenge for round one last year and they beat the power by nine points. Next up is Essendon and the Brisbane Lions at Metricon again, Brisbane paying back-to-back -back away games 
at Metricon Stadium, those poor buggers. So last week, we did see a pretty unconvincing Essendon limp over the line against the winless Adelaide Crows. Mind you, I think Adelaide are definitely capable of taking it up to team. So just on the surface level, that's not necessarily a massive indictment. The week before that, however, they did get rolled by the Bulldogs in what was a quite a disappointing performance. Zach Merritt is in good form, though. He just recorded the highest fantasy score of any player this season, 138, which is just absolutely monstrous when you think about how short these games actually are. I could be wrong, but I feel like Essendon aren't actually that convincing when they play up at Metricon. Off the top of my head, I feel like they've had some close battles with Gold Coast while they were struggling there, which isn't necessarily the most glowing endorsement, but probably also not the best way to really analyze it. The coming up against the Lions side that really hasn't put too much of a foot wrong, they're six and two, like I said, 118%, and their last five has seen wins over Melbourne, GWS, Port Adelaide and Adelaide, and their only loss was a tough game against Geelong, who I still rate. Sometimes, though, the fact that a team hasn't put a foot wrong is more compelling to suggest that they might actually falter eventually. They haven't really had too many mishaps this year, so maybe they are due for one. That being said, I just can't trust Essendon at the moment. Brisbane have proven to be a tough side. They're absolutely a premiership contender this year. Lockheed Neal just chalked up another 33 last week. Ah, I can see this one, like, really fucking me over, but I am going to tip the Brisbane Lions. I just think they're a better side. I'll get them a 22-point win. Ooh, next up, we have a blockbuster between North Melbourne and the Crows, a bottom two clash. This is a tough one to pick as well, so we're up at Metricon again. Look, on paper, North Melbourne are that much better than Adelaide, in my opinion. I've just said North Melbourne have played some crappy football, but they're better than that. Their list and their talent is streets ahead of Adelaide. But sometimes when a team goes so long without a win, unless you're Gold Coast last year, you just have that extra energy and fight to win games. I, I guess both of these sides will look at this as a, as a rare opportunity for a win, and sometimes funny things can happen when that happens. I definitely think Adelaide are the worst side in the competition, but they haven't been, you know, that far behind in the last, especially in the last three weeks. They kind of took it up to West Coast, who sort of kicked away late. I thought they played with good intensity. They challenged St. Kilda, who just knocked off Port. And then last week, they nearly got a win against Essendon. So something is building there. And they're so close to taking that first win of the season. I can't get past the fact that the North Melbourne, I just think, are underachieving as well. And will probably equally approach this as a really, really good statement game. On top of that as well, a win here could potentially lift them higher than Fremantle and Hawthorne on the ladder. I'm going to say North Melbourne are too good here, too tough. If they lose this, it would be an absolute disaster. I'm going to say they win this by, I don't know, 19 points. Next up, we do have the Saints and Sydney at the Gabba. Another two sides with opposite fortunes at the moment. So on my live ladder, you've got St. Kilda in fifth spot below Richmond and Geelong. I think they're actually in the top four um, at the start of this round. Their last five has been impressive. So they just knocked off Port in Adelaide where they kicked 12 goals, one ridiculous effort. They beat Adelaide by four goals, sort of stock standard performance. Losing to Fremantle was absolutely horrible, but they also did get six goals in front and just something saw them drop off. Can you imagine where they would be sitting right now had they not done that against North and Frio? They'd have two extra wins and probably be sitting very close to top of the ladder. That is actually scary. That's just occurred to me right now. It's probably had two performances this year that really make you stand up and take notice. It's beating Port in Adelaide. Again, did Port drop off? Perhaps but it's still a very, very impressive result considering what Port's achieved this year. They've also beaten Richmond by 26 points earlier this season. You can't ignore these Saints anymore. They're looking more and more like they're firming for top eight, potentially top six. I probably wouldn't go further than that just yet. Then you're coming up against Sydney, who again, got a good impor important win last week. They're still in the bottom four, and Hawthorne are actually below them now. So, and uh, look, we talked about the injuries they've got. You've got Heaney out, you've got Kennedy out. They are just a little bit top-heavy to begin with. If I were the Swans, I'd be looking at their weekly contributors right now. You had Jake Lloyd with 34 possessions last week, then Rampy the next best, and then Luke Parker as well. I guess after that, you have Clark and Florent and Cunningham and Rowbottom, but I just I would prefer to see more of a balanced sort of workload amongst some of their sort of lesser lights. And I guess this year is a good opportunity for that because of the injuries that they've sustained. Look, I'm not ragging on Sydney. I actually think they're going pretty all right in terms of the rebuild game, but it is just that a rebuild. And the Saints at the moment are far too good. So I'm going to tip them 
to win this by five goals. There you go, Saints fans. That's probably the biggest tip I've ever given you. Next up, my boys against Dylan's Geelong, actually. This is going to be interesting. I think he's out of town to watch the game, but we'll probably live stream it on the channel uh, because, you know, I just live stream Eagles games these days, apparently. The Eagles, unbelievable last week. By far their best performance of the year and probably going off the top of my head, the most impressive performance we've seen since 2018. Now, I think about it. Look, the Pies did have Pendlebury out. They did have side bottom out. But the Eagles just looked so classy. And there were passages where the ball just would go from one end to the other without the ball hitting to the ground, hitting the ground. And that is exactly... That is premiership football from West Coast. That is when they're at their best. Nat Nui was unbelievable. And that is something the Eagles didn't have last year, which needs to be, you know, mentioned. And I guess part of us is just worried that he's going to go down again. So maybe we don't... Make a big deal of it, but his impact is significant right now. Look, Collingwood did not bring the same brand of football that they've brought all year to that game. And while the Eagles looked amazing, Collingwood's pressure was really crap after quarter time. What I do think this game will do for the Eagles, though, even if it doesn't mean they're that much better than Collingwood, I don't believe they are, but it will give them that confidence that they are the side that won the flag two years ago. They can do it again, and this is a great time to take on another premiership contender in the Cats who have, of course, played two weeks in a row in Perth, uh, got the, didn't get the job done against Collingwood, and then last night, as I attended, they absolutely butchered Fremantle in horrible conditions, and there were times where I thought Fremantle kind of outworked them, but the, the skill level was just so bad that Geelong just ran over the top of them, and, you know, got a pretty big win in terms of percentage in lower scoring games. They've got their injuries, you've got Ablett out, you've got Selwood out, both will be out for this game as well. On the Eagles side of things, you got Yo missing through suspension. I presume they're not going to challenge it. Probably wouldn't if it was me. The Cats are a great side, but I just think based on that last week's result, the Eagles are going to go in with a lot of confidence. If it rains, that's an equalizer. I think that could play into the long hands. But if it's a still night, which I think it will be, I, I believe the Eagles can get the job done here by, say, 18 points. Next up is a battle of the expansion sides, Gold Coast versus GWS. Last year, this couldn't have been more of a stark contrast between the two sides. Gold Coast were the worst side, and GWS made the grand final. This year, it is a lot tighter, especially at home, and especially when you consider the form that GWS are in. Gold Coast are going all right. Obviously, beat Sydney last week, and then nearly beat the Bulldogs, or this week, rather, um, by five points. They lost. At the moment, you'd probably say the Bulldogs are a better form side than GWS, so this challenge doesn't really present too much fear for them, but we are waiting to use a pun, for the sleeping giants to awake because on their day, they are one of the best sides of the competition. But as I look at it, they're 13th on the ladder with 4-4, four and four, less than 100%. They did get the job done against Richmond last week. They really, really needed to. Otherwise, this season was going to get away from them. You had Lockie Whitfield and Josh Kelly get 26 possessions. There's talk of dropping Cornelio a few weeks ago. I don't know if they ever should have done that. I think he's working hard. You've got to back him in. I think dropping your captain's probably going to have too much of a detrimental effect on morale, particularly for him. The Giants are just so star-studded, although, you know, Green did kind of carry them last week. Five goals and 18 possessions. One of the best individual performances we've seen all year, as far as I'm concerned. Look, the Giants are a better side. I'm going to back them in here to get the job done, even though Gold Coast are very, very tough to beat. I'm going to say the Giants click into gear and get a much-needed victory. All right, last game of the seat, of the round, rather, Fremantle taking on Collingwood. Like I said last night, I saw Fremantle play one of the worst games of football I've ever seen. Maybe not in terms of their performance because it was wet weather and I thought they battled hard, but in terms of the overall spectacle, you know, to hit two goals for, there was a time where I thought maybe they won't kick a goal for this entire game. They've got so many injuries and I think that's added up. I think Tarsi, Darcy Tucker went off injured. Walters in the game in a track suit. Not a lot is going right for them. They really need to sort out their injury issues because it's getting ridiculous. Brennan Cox was their only key back going into this game and he was a laid out with injury, if I'm not mistaken. Lucky they're playing Collingwood who don't have too much of a key forward as such and Dugowie is obviously not playing through injury. I guess you've got to worry about Mason Cox if he plays, Darcy Cameron, uh, and Brody Majacek is an absolute gun. But again, that challenge is just a little bit different than if they had like you know a Hawkins in the dry conditions or something to worry about. Collingwood, are, of course, missing Pendlebury. They're missing side bottom for a little bit longer. Not a great excuse to lose the Eagles by that much. Had they lost by a couple of goals, you go, yeah, the Eagles got away with one. But the way Collingwood played was deplorable. And I don't know, I guess they dropped their heads after quarter time. Probably a good time to now come and play Fremantle, who again, really, really devoid of confidence. And uh, guys like Brayshaw are playing really well. I thought Brayshaw played one of his best games for the club that I've seen. Looking really strong over the ball. 
But there's, I don't know if Fife's going to play. That will make a bit of a difference. Walters might be out. Look, it's hard to tip against Collingwood this week. I'm going to say they get the job done by 25 points. There we go, guys. That is the end of a long-winded video. Let's have a look at the ladder. Brisbane, Port, St. Kilda, and West Coast are the top five. Top four, rather. And then you've got Collingwood, Richmond, Geelong, and Carlton making up the rest of that top eight. GWS, Bulldogs, Essendon, and Gold Coast are the next four before Melbourne and North Melbourne sit in 13th and 14th. And then Sydney, Hawthorne, Fremantle, and Adelaide make up the bottom four. I think I said last week the bottom four was settled with North Melbourne in there, but look, they just jumped out and Hawthorne have fallen back in. I don't expect it to stay that way. Hawthorne will come back. Anyway, guys, that is the end of what felt like a very long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to check out Cool World Podcast, check out Druzy's vlog, and check out manscaped.com if you are into that sort of thing, and we will have more info for you in the podcast coming up. Don't forget discount code. It is great value. And look, I'm not asking you to spend money that you don't have on a product you don't need, but if you were considering getting it, it would also help the podcast out a lot and this channel for growing it to where we want it to go. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.